Welcome to White Sands National Park, the biggest off-roading tees of all. All this sand, all this space, and you can't even put one tire on it. We came this weekend on spring break to come check out the White Sands in New Mexico. We're about 10 miles west of Alamogordo, just off of Highway 70. We're about 30 miles east of Las Cruces and about an hour south of Rio Dosa. What can you expect when you come to the White Sands? Well, as we said, there's no off-roading here, but what you can do is you can sled on the sand dunes, You can hike, you can get this awesome, beautiful view like you can't see anywhere else because this sand is white. So what we did on our vacation is we stayed at a town called Cloudcroft and it has a small ski resort with sledding and tubing and sometimes it's fully open. They have a really nice mountain golf course there. They have a space museum in Alamogordo that's low cost for students. Alamogordo is a pretty good sized town, so you have local amenities like Walmart and uh, attractions like movie theaters and little strip malls and shopping and things like that. There are plenty of places to eat here. Another nearby attraction is Carlsbad Caverns, which is about an hour and a half southeast of here. Okay, so what can you expect as far as coming in, whether you got an RV with you if you're just stopping here for a little bit on the way by or if you're gonna make a day trip of this it's definitely enough to keep your kids entertained for hours and they'll be wearing themselves out for a good night's rest for sure park fees $25 per car load is the standard entrance fee right now at this national park if you want to pick up a sled they have them to purchase at the park entrance they have a new price of $25 per sled and you can pick up a a uh, bar of wax for $2. They said that sometimes they have used sleds that they may sell for $15 a piece. And if you turn in your sled, sometimes they offer a promotional uh, other gift to take instead. Off of Highway 70, when you come in, you'll just go straight on through on that road if you wanna get to the toll, where you'll pay your $25, or just immediately off to the right is where the gift center is, uh, where you can pick up your sleds and merchandise this will be your last stop for water. They recommend you take a gallon of water if you're gonna go out on the sand dunes. You definitely wanna let people know if you're here because these sand dunes aren't like other ones where all the dunes are oriented in the same direction. The, the, wind, the wind swirls in this valley a lot, so the shape of the steep side is in different directions. So it's really easy once you go over a couple of hills and you're having fun to look back and you can't even see your vehicle anymore. The entrance is your last stop for water. There's not very much room up there for an RV to stop. You might want to pull to the side of the road and not try and go into the parking lots. Once you're in the park, further down the road towards the end of it is larger parking spots that are better for RVs. Also, that's where they're going to have their outhouses, non-water running outhouses. They did have hand sanitizer, but they're just uh, the hole in the ground tank type situation. No water there, but they do have several restroom sites. They have some shelters for shade here and they do have National Park Service coming and patrolling around if you were to happen to have any problems with your vehicles or anything like that. Even though I'm super jealous that I can't put my paddle tires on this dunes, uh, there's some different changes in the terrain that may not make that favorable. Uh, it's a flat riverbed on the bottom, so it's really steep transitions to the dunes, and then there's vegetation in the hard pack and below. <laughs> The tallest dune looks to be around 40 foot tall and they're pretty much all just plateaued at that same elevation because of the riverbed keeps everything a certain height from the ground. There's no deeper valleys. One thing that's really important to note is that if we don't take care of the parks that we currently have where we can off-road, then those might become like this place where the only thing you can do is put your feet in it. So let's make sure to take care of what we do have and promote good practices of helping each other out, picking up trash when we see it, but definitely if you brought it in, you take it out. Uh, if you've got firewood with nails in it, pick up your nails. If you've got uh, 
cans or even things that you think may be biodegradable, go ahead and go above and beyond and make sure you pick it up and pack it out. That way, those of us in the off-roading community, we don't get a bad rep and we get to start to increase our reputation and maybe more things in the future could get opened up to us. That's all I have for this take of American Adventure Guide. Uh, if you have any more questions, just leave them down in the comments below and I'll try and answer uh, some other things that we came across. And I might leave a few more details down in the description as we continue on our trip if I forget to catch something in the video. So uh, if you like what you see, make sure you subscribe, share with your friends, and check out our other content as we continue to explore more places so that you'll know what to do when you get there.